Welcome to On Texas Football, a little Sunday recruiting update. I'm CJ Vogel, joined today by, of course, Jerry Hamilton, the man on the scene all afternoon, really, in Austin, Texas at DKR uh, on Saturday for the spring game. A big weekend on the field for the Longhorns, being able to put up a show, a 35-34 finish. Very fun day, very electric atmosphere. Of course, recruits got to partake as well. Uh, so it was a busy, not you know, busy day on the field, but certainly one off as well with a big uh, visitor list coming in. Jerry, initial thoughts on the show that Texas put on the field, but also behind the scenes with these recruiting visitors on campus. Yeah, this was a great spring game for recruiting. When you have big plays in the passing game, when points are scored, when quarterbacks look really good, which obviously Arch Manning stole the headlines, but Trey Owens looked really good. You had freshmen making plays, big plays, Ryan Wingo, Trey Owens. I mean, you go down the list, Colin Simmons was out there uh, showing his quickness and speed. You go down that list, uh, then you have transfers making an impact. Uh, you know, Isaiah Bond, rough start, but good finish. Um, you know, so I, I there could it could not 40 plus thousand. I haven't seen official attendance numbers. CJ, you may have them, what Texas reporting, but it couldn't have been a better spring game from a recruiting perspective. I mean, because the show they put on, that's what that's what sports is right now. It's offense. That's if you look at any sport on any level, the rules are made for offense. And if you can put on an offensive show with good quarterback play, big plays in the passing game, uh, you know, so Kobe Black had an interception, I believe, another freshman. But And young guys are making a lot of those plays in a spring game. It's hard to get better for recruiting than that. Yeah, they had the fireworks out. But aside from that, inside of Moncrief, they certainly had the red carpets out for a yeah. number of guys. We'll start with uh, some portal visitors because there were two big ones uh, literally on the defensive line, Jay Toy out of UCLA and Bill Norton out of Arizona, both of them on campus for, for visits. They got to watch the Texas defense. It looked like uh, the interior defensive line had actually a pretty solid day against the run, helped out by the linebackers, of course. Uh, but you certainly still need to add those bodies. And Sarkeesian mentioned it in his press conference afterward. Yeah, we're nowhere near the depth in which we hope to have in uh, the interior defensive line heading into the SEC. Two big visitors. Uh, you broke the news that Toya was on campus this weekend. Uh, what's the latest on the, the pair of those guys? Yeah, and I didn't mention this because I was saving it when we talked to the uh, about the portal visitors, but uh, Savea having a really good game in the spring game. game yesterday. It was great for Bill Norton and Jay Toya to see, a guy that just transferred in. Looks like he's going to have a legitimate impact on the Texas team. That's great. Uh, for these guys to see. Look, uh, Savea's former uh, teammate, Bill Norton, obviously on campus with family members, played for Johnny Nansen at Arizona last year. I'll be very surprised if Norton doesn't end up at Texas. When that gets announced, I don't know. He'll be a grad transfer. Uh, but I think the 6'5 and a half, 325 pound, zero tech, one tilt uh, type of guy who played, I think you said, CJ, 178 snaps in the A gaps last year for a 10 win Arizona team. I I'll be surprised if he doesn't join. Uh, the Texas program, which does help fill a need. Uh, but Texas needs that depth. They rotated six guys last year. They need adults in the room. Uh, they need guys that uh, have big game experience. Uh, Bill Norton has, look, he didn't play a lot in games at Georgia, but he lined up across from five NFL guys on the offensive line at Georgia every day in practice. They're large humans. So he knows what it looks like. He's he's learned how to play against those guys, and that helped him when he transferred uh, to Arizona. On Jay Toy, I think this is a huge recruitment for Texas. Dominic Williams, obviously, the TCU transfer is going to visit Tuesday and Wednesday. That that visit remains scheduled as of late Saturday night. Um, but Jay Toy was there with his family, multiple family members, including his little brother, who Texas offered one of the top 2027 20, D linemen in the country. Big recruitment. Look, there's a lot of ties to Johnny Nansen here. Um, Johnny Nansen recruited him out of high school. Uh, when Nansen was at USC, obviously Toy ended up at UCLA. Uh, Nansen coached him there for a year before moving on to Arizona. So Nansen has a built-in, long-standing relationship with his family. Um, and I think that's very impactful here. I, I think Texas is in a good spot. Uh, you know, look, this these are ones you just got to get over the finish line at some point. But I, I think Texas is in a good spot for Toya. Um, and look, if they can win both these guys, CJ, then – you know, Dominic Williams, Texas will be all in on Dominic Williams. And you're really at that point, if Texas wins both of these and we'll, we'll see what happens, then, you know, you're Dominic Williams away from uh, shoring up a defensive line really, really quickly. 
Absolutely. And as a result of Zach Swanson also entering the portal yeah. Saturday morning, you're actually below the 85 scholarship limit yeah. as well. Of course, we still expect a few names to enter the portal now that spring football has concluded. That window, of course, closes April 30th. Uh, but now that you're under the bubble, you're able to, you know, at least sit back and say, all right, we've got some stress off of us now. We can go add who we want to. And of course, Toya Norton on campus, Williams coming in. It looks like the defensive line uh, positions being addressed for this season, but for years past, and this was a big group coming in, Jerry, uh, originally Kevin Wynn, Malik Autry, Zion Williams. Weather didn't help Texas no. uh, in this regard. Um, what's the latest? Did Who did you see come in? Did Texas see any of those visitors come in? Yeah, those D-line guys did not come in. Texas rescheduled a couple of those guys, honestly, because they didn't want them to fly in, spend all that money if – you know, spring game was canceled, right? So there were some uh, adjustments and plans there. Uh, Kenny Baker will be hitting the road soon for the spring evaluation window is under, it began April 15th, runs through the end of May. Texas will be out seeing those guys in person coming up here uh, late April, early May with Kenny Baker on the road. I suspect that uh, we'll, you know, a guy like Derry Norris, who to him and his father did not come in uh, because they weren't certainty if the spring game was going to be played. Um, I, I think uh, I think you'll see these guys on campus. Uh, I, you know, look at Kevin Wynn. Kevin Wynn will be more interesting. I think there's a uh, and Malik Autry. Th those are steep hills to climb. Uh, and, and Texas really wanted to get those guys on campus in April. We're unable to do so. They got Myron Charles on campus. Obviously, Zion Williams was on campus a couple of weeks ago. He'll be back for the spring game. Uh, but Texas will be out and about seeing those guys in May. I think we'll see a couple of those guys schedule official visits in June. As for guys who were on campus and helping Texas recruit, Texas had a, a, a trio of commitments in the 2025 class on campus. KJ Lacey, uh, you know, Elijah Barnes and Lance Jackson. I should talk to KJ a little bit who watched the quarterbacks put on a show and said, yeah, that's exactly what I wanted to see. Essentially, you'll hear from him a little bit later in this video as well as Elijah Barnes. But a uh, good day for them getting to showcase, you know, the playmakers making plays. As Sarkeesian put it in his press conference, uh, I, I wanted to pivot a little bit to potential 2025 recruits who might yeah. be joining the class because it felt to me like there were a couple guys trending to Texas earlier in the day following the visit whether or not you talk to them or not there's still a few guys that I think Texas is in a very good spot for at the moment yeah I think so um I think Riley Pettijon um Texas was it was either the leader or right there in the fight for Pettijon obviously um you know Florida State Ohio State, USC, and AM are in it. Um, will Riley Pettijon go all the way through the June official visit process? We shall see. He's scheduled to be at Texas June 14th through 16th. I think he was there with his mother and father yesterday. I think Texas did nothing but help their uh, chances yesterday with Riley Pettijon. I heard he had a great meeting. Him and his family had a great meeting with Steve Sarkeesian uh, prior to the spring game. So I, I think things are certainly moving in the right direction for Texas with Riley Pettijon. I think him and uh, Elijah Barnes know they can play together that, at, at Texas at that linebacker spot. Uh, Texas is looking for three linebackers in the 2025 class. Uh, obviously, having a father that played at Syracuse, he's a, he's more familiar with the recruiting process. Um, you know, he has a uh, older sister that's going to go to FAMU in Tallahassee next year. Uh, that doesn't have much to do with the Florida State interest, and I don't think that'll be a deciding factor for him. I think Texas is in a pretty good spot for Riley Pettijon entering May. Um, again, he had a great – him and his family had a great visit with Steve Sarkeesian prior to the game. Uh, James Simon, the running back out of Shreveport, Calvary Baptist, I, I think is a guy that uh, if you see him – obviously, this is pretty obvious, but if you see him make a May decision and that go, trends to Texas – uh, then Texas is pretty much telling you Jordan Davidson's going to Ohio State. James Simon, a really good player in his own right. His father, John Simon Jr., played uh, briefly in the NFL as a running back, was a standout running back at Louisiana Tech, and has coached in the college level for about 12, 13 years now. He has a really strong relationship with Deshard Choice. Uh, it's Deshard Choice's ability to continue the development of James Simon is important in this recruitment. That's one of the things that his father's looking at. And I think Texas is in a good spot for uh, James Simon. Texas A&M and Notre Dame are the competition. LSU took two backs. Harlan Berry, one of those, former Texas target in this 25 class. Already JT Lindsay, the speedster out of Alexandria, Louisiana, the other. Uh, and then the third guy I wanted to mention, uh, because we're going to we're gonna talk about offensive linemen here in a little bit. Third guy I wanted to mention is Kelshawn Johnson out of Hitchcock. He, he, he made a visit to Texas yesterday. 
uh, with his younger sister, standout athlete at Hitchcock uh, Junior High, by the way, and his mom for the first time. This is the first time family members came on campus with Kelshawn. Uh, because his mom works in nursing, she works a lot of weekends. Kelshawn's always visited Texas with a seven-on-seven -seven coach, a high school coach, or teammates. He came with Jonah Williams, a friend, uh, mm -hmm. in that April 6th visit weekend. So this was the first time for him and his family uh, to be on campus. And he met with Steve Sarkeesian. The meeting went very, very well. I think Texas uh, is a favorite for Kelshawn Johnson right now. We'll see how things uh, go down the line there. USC uh, is in it. Texas Tech, his teammate, the Lloyd Jones, the four-star quarterback at Hitchcock's committed to Tech, is in it. Texas A&M, uh, Penn State, uh, those guys are all in it. TCU's trying to get a May official visit. But uh, Kelshawn Johnson, one of the fastest prospects in the country and a guy that uh, Texas Steve Sarkeesian really liked. Yeah, a good day for Texas to have big days from their wide receivers yesterday with a guy like Kelshawn Johnson in attendance. Obviously, Isaiah Bond turned it on the second half. DeAndre Moore, 75-yard touchdown. Ryan Wingo, a guy that stole the show a little bit uh, as well. So good day for Texas to display their talent at the wide receiving spot. Uh, but moving to the big bodies up front, because we covered yeah. the defensive line, covered some playmakers. Uh, but what about the big humans? Kyle Flood. Again, very active here, had a couple of big names. First, Nick Brooks, out-of-state, uh, 2025 offensive lineman, 6'7", by the way. I saw him roaming the sidelines, Jerry. Looked every bit of it. And, of course, 2026 offensive lineman from North Crowley, someone you and I believe will be a, you know, a guy with five stars by his name uh, next cycle. That's John Turntime. Both of them on campus, both of them able to see this Texas unit in action. Uh, what's the latest? What did you think about those two visiting uh, on Saturday? Look, the feedback I've received on Nick Brooks, all 6'7", 350 pounds of them around there, right, is that Georgia and Texas are the top two after the visit yesterday. Texas is very much in this. It's kind of what happened with Brandon Baker. We'll see if Texas ends up reeling him in like they did Brandon Baker. I think Georgia is real competition. I think Georgia's probably one uh, for Nick Brooks. I think Texas vaulted the two. Sound familiar? Like Jamie French's recruitment, right? Uh, and then you have Iowa and you have USC. I, I think uh, that – NIL is going to be part of this recruitment, and that, that makes Iowa have a tough road, especially after Caden Proctor walked away and went back to Alabama. Uh, but I think this was Nick Brooks' first trip to Texas, first time to meet Kyle Flood, first time to sit and talk with Steve Sarkeesian, first time to see the Texas program in person. And he left with bright eyes. I mean, he, you know, he, he saw a Texas team that has really good quarterbacks and a really fun offense that's headed to the SEC – uh, which he does like in his recruitment. So, again, I think Georgia's won. I think Texas vaulted the two. They'll get him back on campus for a June 14th through 16th official visit. Now, he is scheduled to officially visit Georgia May 31st through June 2nd. So we'll see if Georgia tries to close that out before the rest of those June visits, which is USC, I believe, the 7th through 9th, Texas the 14th through 16th, and Iowa the 21st through 23rd. Uh, but we'll see if he makes all those June visits or not, especially that last visit. That's Iowa's hopes as he makes that last visit. But Kyle Flood will be back at JFK High in Cedar Rapids in May to see Nick Brooks. So that recruitment has officially begun. John Turntine, the third uh, on Texas football five-star ranked prospect um, out of North Crowley High, was on campus with Ray Gates, the head coach at North Crowley, and three teammates, all linemen, four Division One linemen. That's why North Crowley's going to make another run at the – a state championship, state semifinal this year. A lot of talent in the North Crowley program. But John Turntine, uh, to me, has been the best upside prospect in the state of Texas uh, this big, at his sophomore year, and that included the 24 class, 25 class, and 26 class. I think Turntine's that level prospect. I really do. And that's saying something because Colin Simmons and the Corey and Moore are special. Uh, but Turntine, I think Texas is in a good spot for him. It'll be a while probably before he announces a lit cut, cutting of a list. But Texas is going to be right there. Uh, right. Could something happen if Michael Fasusi ends up at Texas? Could, could something do, happen there to where it changes Texas' trajectory? I'm not going to rule that out. We'll see what happens with Fasusi with Oklahoma and A&M pushing hard. Uh, but John Turntine's got two sisters uh, that have been attending Huston Tillotson there in Austin. One of those sisters is now going to attend Texas. Uh, she got into Texas as, as a transfer. So, look, he's going to have a family member at Texas. Family makes a lot of trips to Austin. Obviously, his dad played at TCU for Gary Patterson. Tough recruitment uh, there for the family. Uh, but I think Texas is in a real is in a good spot early on for John Turntime. But this is a national battle uh, that will have everybody, every big school in the country in it. But I do think those sisters have stayed close to home. 
I think you're going to see a continuing theme there, which uh, means Texas A&M, where he was at last weekend for the first time, will probably be a part of this recruitment as well because the key with John Turntine, he wants to be pre-med. He's top 5% of his class. He's in contention uh, to be the valedictorian of his class at North Crowley. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but he's in contention. This is a true academic football recruitment, and those always help Texas and Texas A&M on a kid in the state of Texas. Yeah, especially at the offensive line position where we've seen Texas be able to retain and attract so much uh, big-time talent there. Uh, last guy I wanted to get to, Jerry, was Caleb Williams, yep. the tight end out of El Dorado Hills, California, uh, Oak Ridge High School. Has an official visit June 7th through 9th, was able to get a little bit of a uh, – uh, a sneak peek at what that official visit will look like, obviously, with the visit for the spring game. Uh, Texas, that tight end spot's looking very interesting. Yeah. Where does he fall right now amongst that group in the 2025 class? Well, and commit and, and Amari Winston was on campus as well for the first yeah. time in a while. Um, and Amari Winston and Nick Townsend are more of the pass catching uh, number one. First, you know, that's their that's the key to their game, right? They're not as much inline guys. They're pass catching, receiving threats at the tight end position. Uh, so, it, uh, Mari Winston back on campus will be back for an official visit June 21st through 23rd. And he talked to uh, uh, Caleb Edwards. And uh, Caleb Edwards is a guy who he had, this was his first trip to Texas, a guy that Jeff Banks offered in January. He's really come on. He's becoming a national recruit. He's uh, 6'6, about 225 out of Oak Ridge High there in El Dorado, California. Look, he was just at Georgia and Alabama. Um, he's got official visits scheduled to both of those um, at Oregon's in it as well. USC. I mean, they're everybody's in it for Caleb Williams. He's one of the top uh, four star tight ends, one of the top tight ends in the country. Uh, but he has that earlier official visit. I think right now, you know, Texas would love in the class. They're going to they're going for two tight ends in this class. Even Amari Winston said it yesterday. Uh, all the guys that Texas has, the four guys they have coming in for official visits, know it's going to be a two tight end class. I think right now. Uh, Keani Armstrong and Caleb Edwards are the two big tight ends that uh, Texas hopes to uh, get one of those guys. And then you have Amari Winston, uh, Amari Winston and Nick Townsend, which Nick Townsend has may have not have a peer athletically in this class after running 10, 9, 2, 230 pounds at the district track meet. So Caleb Edwards first visit to Austin coming back for a June 7th through 9th official visit. Perfect, Jerry. And we got some recruit reactions and, yeah. and sneak peeks of what they wanted to see at Texas. We talked to a couple of them before uh, the spring game took place. But before we get there and before we wrap this up, do you mind telling us one more time about our good friend Mark Saunders and Allstate? Yeah, yeah. When it comes to protecting all your stuff, wouldn't it be great to have one place that protects it all? Here's some great news for all the Texas fans on On Texas Football. Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders is the only insurance agent you'll need to help keep tabs on protection for all your stuff. Everything from your home, car, and boat to your motorcycle, RV, and even that ATV. Call Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office today at 512-218-8571. Are you in good hands? You'll be in great hands with over 35 years of experience with Texas alum Mark Saunders. Again, give him a call today, 512 512- 218-8571. Do what so many Texas fans that are part of on Texas football have done. Call Mark Saunders. Make that change. Hey, and CJ, I want to leave you with this. Got Just got a text. Keelan Russell's on campus. So the Duncanville quarterback finished up track uh, at region meet in Waco yesterday. Uh, and Keelan Russell is on campus or is in Austin. So he'll be making a visit over to Texas today. Will be very interesting to see if he leaves with an offer in hand. Of course, KJ Lacey on campus as well this weekend. Uh, but, but Jerry, all in all, a strong performance on the the football field for the spring game is going to help this group of uh, of of recruits uh, when it comes down to it. When they sit back and evaluate their time there at DKR at Moncrief and obviously the atmosphere around the stadium, that's going to help Texas. And so uh, we got a couple of recruit reactions both before the game and after we talked to KJ Lacey and Elijah Barnes afterwards to kind of see what they thought about yeah. their position groups at Texas. So a good day. Texas certainly made steps in recruiting despite a couple cancellations due to the weather, which ended up being rather nice for the game. Funny how that works. But uh, all in all, a good recruiting weekend there. And it will certainly spring forward into uh, the, the quiet month of May as – Coaches get back, back on the road, road uh, before the official visits really start piling in in June. And, you know, June 14th through uh, 
the 21st. Those weeks are going to be very busy for Steve Sarkeesian and his staff. Yeah, they're going to be very busy. Uh, the month of May is uh, while the team will be away. It's going to be a very busy month uh, of May in recruiting. It's a huge evaluation month for Texas because the June camps are right around the corner. So 2025, guys, I think we have a good idea. Now, Kenny Baker will add two or three defensive linemen to that official visit list in June, but you're going to see more 2026 guys offered, and Texas is going to set up to get those guys on camp, uh, on campus in June for camps because it'll be the elite camp early in June. Then it'll be that second weekend uh, June camp as well. They always have the bigs come to. Uh, but this is a huge month of evaluation for Kenny Baker on the D-line in 25. Uh, yeah. But for 26s for this Texas staff so they can get as many of these guys to campus as possible this summer. One last guy I'll toss in. Weston Nielsen, the 2027 Bashrock quarterback, was on campus Saturday as well. He'll also be back June 1st for the Elite Camp then. So uh, thanks for, for jogging my memory there a little bit, Jerry. But uh, that'll do it for the recruiting breakdown of the Texas spring game and recruits on campus. Of course, Keelan Russell, you just mentioned, on campus Sunday morning as we are recording this just arrived. So big note as, as of that as well. Uh, but for Jerry Hamilton, I'm C.J. Vogel, and this has been on Texas Football. Welcome. 2025 Texas quarterback commit KJ Lacey at the spring game today. You got to see the quarterbacks put on a show today. What'd you like? Uh, you know, all the new faces on the team and uh, quarterback play really good, obviously. So, uh, you know, RJ did this thing, Trey did this thing. Um, you know, all around, you know, the team just looked really good today. And of course, some playmakers at the receiver spot yes, stood out as well. Oh, yeah. Yes, who, 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 who stood out to you? Uh, Wingo, he had a really good day. Um, Bond had a touchdown, you know, towards the end of the game, he did pretty good. Uh, it was just everybody, honestly. Running backs did really good today. O line, they they did their thing. So uh, you know, all, like all, like I said, all around good day today. Perfect. And that's KJ Lacey, 2025 Texas commit at the spring game. All right, 2025 uh, Dallas Skyline Texas commit linebacker Elijah Barnes out here at the spring game. What do you think about the the performance out there on at DKR? I was just, I, it was very good to me. Uh, I feel like everybody was really, you know, getting around good and. You know, competing with each other, you know, like I said, on both sides of the ball and just playmakers out there. In particular on the defense, anybody catch your eye that, you know, made a couple plays? Um, I seen uh, Anthony uh, Black, yep. uh, the DB, you know, he kind of, kind of, you know, caught my attention, you know, with the interception, the big interception that he had and, you know, and, and Hill, you know, just how he was getting to the ball, you know, side out of sideline, Colin Simmons as well. You know, him, you know, just being a versatile guy, you know, can play off the ball too. You know, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a couple people that caught my eyes. Perfect. That's 2025 Texas linebacker commit Elijah Barnes. Hook him. All right, 2025 linebacker Riley Pettigrew on campus today for the Texas spring game. Of course, where does Texas kind of fall for you right now? What are you looking forward to uh, ahead of the game? Uh, they're definitely up there. I'm uh, looking forward. What I'm looking forward to is uh, just seeing how their defense flies around and see how much they, uh, they've they improved. And definitely the linebacking core as a whole, and see how uh, Coach Nansen has developed them and elevated their game since last season. Yeah, of course, Coach Nansen on campus now. What's your relationship like with him, and how's that grown over the last couple months? Um, our relationship is good. It's definitely been growing me, growing um, – and he, he hits me up from time to time. We just type it up about uh, the school and uh, where we stand and where, where he sees me in the program and things like that. Good deal. That's 2025 McKinney linebacker Riley Pettijon here at Texas. All right, 2025 uh, running back James Simon here at Texas. You got to see the spring game. What stood out to you today? Um, I would say just the, the competitiveness. Uh, the running backs were getting it. They were getting fed a lot. Uh, I liked what I saw from Baxter. He's a, he's a dog. He's a good uh, running back for sure. So I definitely loved what I saw out there. Yeah, we saw, you know, CJ Baxter, Jaden Blue, Trey Wisner. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, talk about a little bit of what you saw from the versatility of that group as well. Um, it's definitely all different types of skill sets. Um, Baxter can definitely do it all, catch out the backfield, finish runs. I love, I like Red too. Red's a good guy. He's good at what he does. I like his vision. Um, I like Trey. Trey's nice. I really do. Uh, I'm excited to see what the freshman, uh, Jarek and uh, Christian, got going through too this year. So I'm excited for everything. And then your thoughts on the Texas offense as a whole? Um, fast. I like it. They play fast. They're explosive. You know, they got big plays. But if they want to take their time with you, they will. So I, I definitely see myself playing that offense. I, I really like what they got going on. I like what uh, Coach Stark has planned for the offense for sure. And that's 2025 uh, Louisiana running back, James Simon. Appreciate you.
2026 Midland offensive lineman Cooley Primus on campus today at the Texas Spring Game. What are you looking forward to today in terms of the play on the field? Just to see how the environment is, even though it's not like a real game, I want to see how the fans are going to react to seeing how their team is going to produce this year. And of course, down here in Austin, what's your relationship like with Coach Flood and Coach Sarkeesian? I hope it will be good. I've, um, I haven't talked to them a lot. Obviously, it's just because I'm, I'm still a sophomore, but I feel like it will be a good relationship. I like, I like what they are doing down here. I really like it. Perfect. And that's 2026 Midland Offensive Lineman Cooley Prowse.